this is the battery to battery charger and all the cabling for the electric system so hopefully I've measured all that correctly and it's all the right length. Let's see. If you're new to this channel we're James and Sarah also known as the whole world or nothing. We used to be full-time backpackers exploring the world and writing about our travels in our blog. And then the world changed. We got repatriated from Peru and found ourselves back in the UK at a loose end. So we decided to do a van conversion. Make sure you hit subscribe now so you can join us in this series as we share the highs and many lows of converting an old Mercedes Sprinter panel van into our dream home on wheels. As you can probably tell from the condition of the van, we actually ordered, received and unboxed the battery to battery charger a fair while before we were ready to install it. We bought a kit from simplysplitcharge.co.uk which came with everything we needed to get it fitted as well as pretty good instructions on how to do it. If you watched our solar setup video then you'd have seen us putting in our control panel and fixing our B2B charger here. But it's actually recommended you put the unit as close to the starter battery as possible, so the first job of the day was to relocate that. In order to get the juice flowing from the starter battery of the van into our ledger batteries here, we've had to run the cables from front to back and I'll just show you exactly where they are going to go. So they're going to run all the way along here, that's going to be under the bed and then we're going to have a seat and some cabinets and our oven so you're not going to be able to see the cables and they're going to drop down here into our footwell or our step. They're going to go underneath the step, probably somewhere up here, just clipped on and we've already put them through this little hole here which goes into the cap. And it comes out the other side and then conveniently there is a hole in the seat, in the passenger seat. And then if we lift these seats off, then you can see that they'll just run through that seat. There's a hole at the bottom of this one that they can run under. And then this is where a lot of the electrics actually come from the battery anyway. So we're just pushing them through there along with the other wires and then from there we can reach the starter battery so it's all already set up to allow you to do that in a sprinter van which is pretty convenient because i've seen some other people trying to install this and they had to remove various bits and pieces and put it under matting and all that so this has been relatively easy i think compared to other ones after working out the route the cables would take we took them back out and put protective conduit around any bits that could potentially rub on anything. As you can see, it was quite a fiddly and annoying job. We need to decide whether we're going to put this temperature sensor on or not. Like it says in the instructions, it's optional. Basically, it just changes the voltage depending on how hot or cold the battery is down there, like the voltage that it's sending to it. Okay, is that important? Who knows? It says it's optional. I guess it. It's important if the temperature of the batteries is going to be very variable. I don't know. May as well put it on then, I guess. Well, that's what I'm thinking. There's no harm in doing that, is there? Yeah. We need to run that under there as well. I was trying to blow us all up. <laughs> I forgot to break the circuit, so I just created a little spark, but it was only tiny, it's all right. Only tiny? <laughs> yeah. I saw it, I was outside of the van. No, <laughs> you did it. Lit up the night sky. Hardly. Do you remember to break the circuit before you're working on your electrics, please? Yes. Otherwise you will blow yourself up. Ideally, I'd have put circuit breakers in the B2B circuit too. But as the kit we bought came with inline fuses, we just used those and put an isolator switch in instead. Let's see if uh, James was listening when I was explaining that to him. The kit that we got for this battery to battery charger comes from a company called Simply Split, Split Charge, right? Yeah, Simply Split Charge. <laughs> However, the kits that they sell don't come with isolator switches, they only come with fuses, which is fine, but we wanted the opportunity or the possibility to be able to turn this part of the system off if we need to. And the only way to do that is with an isolator switch, really. So we're going to put an isolator switch in right next to where the um, piece of equipment is itself 
and that way it's going to be in the cab so that if we need to turn it off while we're looking at it or anything like that it's going to be close close to hand this is the isolated switch that we're going to be using we're just going to drill a hole through the side of one of these seats the passenger seats here and we are going to pop this in um, hopefully it should be relatively straightforward we found a place where it's going to be out of the way of everyone's feet so that no one can kick it off uh, so yeah let's do that we started off using the yellow drill with the red bit but that was pretty useless so we switched the yellow drill with the black bit but that was worse than useless so we tried the yellow drill with the red bit again just to check and it made a scratch but not the hole we were looking for so we switched to the green drill with the red bit before finally admitting we were properly wasting our time. This is the current situation like it's cutting it but just not very effectively and we've been at that for like I don't know it must be like 20 minutes or something like this metal is thicker than the metal on the outside of the van like we cut through for the windows and stuff but yeah it shouldn't be that difficult same situation as usual then this won't take long five hours later yes well i think it's only been three hours but, <laughs> but we've been screw fixed a couple of times we decided we needed a new drill bit because the other one wasn't cutting through and it looks a little bit blunt I don't know whether it actually was, so we're going to see whether that was the problem. Hopefully this will slice through it like butter and we will be back on track within about five minutes, but let's see. So it was the drill bit? Yep. Yeah. Kids, that would be a lesson in having the right tools for the job. It went through in about five spins and I had to stop it from going right through the other side of the van. <laughs> so that is good. We need to get that hole rust proof now. We need to tidy up because there's shavings everywhere, metal shavings, and they are the enemy because they lead to rust very quickly so we're gonna do that we'll get the isolator switch in and then we can carry on finally with the rest of this battery to battery charger <laughs> Okay, so we've got all the wires run through in the right places. It took quite a bit of faffing because we've put some protective conduit on the section that goes under the floor in there so that it's not rubbing on, on anything, the cables. So we had to take them out, feed it back through, take them out, feed it back through, but we've got them in the right place now because the conduit's really tight so it doesn't just like slide along, which is a bit annoying. Anyway, all that's left to do now is fit the B to B charger in place, connect the wires into the underneath of that, or the cables rather, and put the two negative cables into the negative terminal of the starter battery. Then put the fuses in, and we're good to go. And then go for a drive. Yeah. See if it works. Yeah. <laughs> Now we haven't actually explained what a battery to battery charger is and if you got this far without knowing that then hats off to you Unita. But basically it's a way to funnel the excess power generated when you drive around from the battery of the van into the battery bank that our electrical system runs off. So when it's time we're driving we're also charging our batteries which is pretty cool if you ask us. Obviously going to um, clean all this up, yeah? This is, isn't our dirt, it's from the uh, whoever owned it last being a work van. That is a mess! Oh man, that's bigger than a six! <laughs> uh, I think that's an eight. So we've just been out to get lugs and we've got the wrong ones. <laughs> yeah, I already had these ones. Good. <laughs> And that's why you should always leave a little bit extra room on your cable in case you have to redo it. So everything's wired up down here into the starter battery of the van. So this is the negative terminal. 
this is the these are the two negative cables one going to the b2b one going down to the laser battery and this is the positive terminal which is the positive cable that runs into the battery to battery charger the main reason that the instructions varied from the ones from Simply Sprit Charge and the manufacturer ones is because Simply, Sprit, Simply Split Charge just say to run your negative um, onto an earth on the chassis but the manufacturers say to bring it back to the starter battery which is what we've done. So we've got our positive and negative running from the battery the SATA battery into the b2b and then the positive runs from the b2b down to the leisure batteries at the end and then a negative cable runs back up from the leisure batteries right back up to the starter battery to connect the whole circuit and obviously there's the two fuses close to each battery bank and the isolator switch that's up top here that we can cut the whole circuit with so hopefully when we put the fuses in now it turns on and it works and if any of you are thinking what on earth is Sarah on about right now don't worry you're not alone I haven't got a clue either I've literally just been doing exactly what she's told me to do and we're gonna cross our fingers and <laughs> <laughs> you are. I'm going to cross my fingers. Confident Sarah's, man. Sarah's confident. <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers that it's all going to work. I think we're good to go. Check the uh, instructions again. We do need to set it to the right type of batteries that we have, but that's just so it's like optimal operating conditions. It's not going to not work. Right. So, yeah. So, what do we do? Turn it on on the uh, switch down there yeah and then start the engine see what happens on the thing well no turn it on first see what happens on the thing because it says what's supposed to happen in terms of what LEDs will light up etc etc and then yeah we'll um, if that's all working all right we'll go for a drive okay so then start the engine no not yet all right we'll just okay. turn this on first okay all right turn it on well, at least the van starts anyway, after we've been tinking around with everything. That is true. As you can see, we fixed two strips of wood onto the metal of the seat with strong flexible adhesive so that we could use those to mount the B2B charger on. What we didn't film, but what you'll find opposite, is the other inline fuse, mounted in exactly the same way onto a piece of wood. Okay, so it's saying no faults on the right, so that's good. And it's on gel two. It's on AGM two, which is like is the selected battery type, which I think is going to be ours. But we need to double check that. It's on thirteen point eight volts input input volt voltage. So we should probably drive it. Let's take it for a spin. And then stop. You know, like drive it for like five ten minutes, and then yeah. stop, and then see what what it's doing. Then do you know what I mean? I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> You didn't need much to convince them. No, I'm off. You better get in. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> well, everything's sounding all right so far. There's no beeps or weird noises <laughs> or anything. I wasn't really expecting any beeps or weird noises. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it sounds all right. It sounds fine. To test it out, we went for a drive in an empty car park where we could safely watch the box whilst we were moving to see whether it was functioning properly. So if you saw a massive white van doing donuts somewhere in West Yorkshire last year, that was just us checking we'd installed it correctly. Okay, that's it for this week, champs. We hope you enjoyed it. Please give the thumbs up a little nudge if you did. And just below that to the right is the subscribe button, which we'd love you to hit if you haven't already. And be certain to click the little alarm bell as well to make sure you get notified every time we post a new video. Now next week things are really hotting up because we're going to start cladding our van out and putting our ceiling lights in. Be there or be square.